trainer Reuven Lerner here with another question from a subscriber to my Better Developers mailing list. This one comes from Rivka and she found a question online that I really like because it digs into a whole bunch of different issues that people encounter on a regular basis, including strings, including searching, including slices, and best of all, list comprehensions. So let's dig in and see what we can do with this. So she writes that the question asks us to write a function called string match. And string match is a function that takes two strings as arguments. And basically, so we'll just call them like S1 and S2 for now. And the idea is that this function should return an integer. The number of times that a two character substring in S1 occurs in the same place in S2. So if S1 is XXC, AAZZ, this is her example, and S2 is XXB, AAZ, no, they're not the same length. The idea is that we want to find out, does XX appear in the same place, same indexes in S1 and S2? And then XC, does that appear in the same index in both of them? And then XCA, and then AA, and then AZ, and then ZZ. So what we're going to have to do is go through each of these strings and compare them at each of these indexes. So how are we going to do that? Well, I think this is a useful exercise, not just for all the reasons I mentioned earlier, but because it allows us to think about how to approach these problems, how to solve them. How do we try to break things down? And what you might do in another language, in a more, say, formal language, a statically compiled language, is you'll create a function and you'll start writing it and it'll get frustrating. And one of the reasons why I like to use Jupyter is that I can just sort of play with things a little bit. I can experiment. So what am I trying to do here? Well, I'm trying to find out if S1, well, first of all, how do I get a two character substring? For that, I'm going to use a slice. And a slice in Python always looks like start until end and step. Well, we're not going to need the step here at all. So we're just going to ignore that. But it's always start and actually is going to be end index plus one. So if I say here, for example, S1, from zero until two, that's gonna give me XX because it starts at index zero. It's up to and not including index two. Remember that strings in Python are zero index. So the first thing is zero. And then if I say S1 from one until three, oops, that's gonna be XC because we're sort of moving along. And S1 from two until four, on, on, on like that. So what we really wanna be doing is moving through the string, grabbing each individual pair of characters, we're going to get index 0, then up to plus 2, index 1 until plus 2, index 2 until plus 2. That sounds remarkably like an, uh, a loop, a for loop. Now, if I were using a language in which for loops used indexes like, heaven forbid, C, then it would be really easy. I'd start at 0, then 1, then 2, and go on and on and on. But in Python, when I iterate over a string, I don't actually have the indexes. What I have instead are the characters. I can say for one item in S1, print one item. I'm going to get the individual characters, and that's not really what I want here. But it is possible to get the indexes. It's a tiny bit roundabout, but not too terrible. What I can do is I can say for one item in, and I can say range of len S1. So what's going on there? Well, len is going to give me the length of S1, and that's going to be a number, of course, the number of characters in S1. And then range will give me a special range object that knows how to do iterations. It'll iterate from zero up to and not including that number. So if I now do for one item in range len S1, I get zero until six. And of course, the len of S1 is seven. So that's pretty good, right? Well, almost, almost. We'll get there in a moment. So I'm just going to call this index now, or index in range S1, and then print index. We've got the indexes, but of course we don't care about the indexes. What we care about is about grabbing a two character substring from S1. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to say S1 square brackets index until index plus two. See what I did there? So I've now, I'm going to grab that first two character thing, then the second two character, then the third two character thing, and look at that. I get exactly what we were doing manually before, but now I have to write much less code because I am using a slice, a slice along with a loop. So we get XX, then XC, right? Then CA, then AA, then AZ, and ZZ. And then we've got this one little Z that's left behind here. Well, we don't actually want that in the end. So I'm just gonna say here, range len S1 minus one. And then we cut that one off at the end there. We don't need to worry about it. Okay, 
So now that I've got that, what do I want to do? Well, I want to check to see if this is the same as what we have in S2 at exactly the same place. So what I can do is I could say this. I can say if S1 index index plus 2 equals equals S2 of index until index plus 2, then I can say print you know, found a match. And there we go, we found three matches. Now, wouldn't it be nice to know what those matches are? Yeah, I think so too. So I'm gonna say here, found a match, and because it's an F string, I can say here, S1 of index, index plus two. And let's just double check this is true. You know what, let's even print the index here. We'll do index equals. So at index equals zero, right? So it's zero on both of them we can see in parallel. We have XX and XX, true enough. And then index three, zero, one, two, three. So we should have, AA and AA, and indeed they're both in the same, in the two different strings at the same place. And then at index four, we have AZ and AZ. Sure enough, they match. So I actually did find them correctly. So if I want to, I can wrap this up in a function. I can say here def string match of S1 and S2. I'll just indent all these guys, but I don't want to print it out. I want to return a number. So I can say here, pound, let's say total equals zero. And then we'll say here, Total, I'm actually going to just comment this out here. Total plus equal one, and then we can return total. And now if I run string match on S1 and S2, I get three. That's great. That's great. And it actually works pretty nicely. But there's an even better way to do this. All right. Now, it's a little harder to understand, but I really like it more. I'm going to take exactly the same idea, and I'm going to turn it around a little bit. I'm going to use a list comprehension here. Now, list comprehension is a for loop of sorts, but it's not the same as a regular for loop. In a for loop, we want to perform an action each with each iteration. In a list comprehension, what we want to do is get a result back from each iteration. And we can also say, wait, I actually don't want it all the time. So what I can I do here? I can say def string match of S1 and S2. And then I'm going to turn it around. I'm going to say here, S1 index index plus 2. Or here's where my for loop is going to be index in range of len s1 minus 1. Then I'm going to say if s1 of index index plus 2 equals equals s2 of index index plus 2. So you can see how I flipped it around, but now the result is going to be a list. And if I return this list, then if I say string match of s1 and s2, there we go, I got the matches, but that's not what I wanted. I mean, it's true, it found all the matches, but I don't want to find the matches. I want to find out what those matches are, right? I want to find out, I want to find out how many matches there are. So how am I going to do that? It's actually surprisingly easy. I'm just going to replace this output, the expression that we produce, I'm going to replace it with a one. So every time we find a match at parallel indexes, I'm going to return one in this list. And now I get one and one and one. All right, that doesn't seem like a big deal, right? Aha, but I can say here, some of these, as opposed to all of them, I'll just do some of them. No, okay. Some mean I'm going to add them all together. And now, string match S2, S1, S2 is going to be three. What about if I call here, all right, she gives me a few other examples, string match of ABC and ABC. So it should match at AB and BC. And sure enough, we get two there. What if I say here, string match of ABC and AXC, well, I'm going to get back zero because AB does not match AX and BC does not match XC. So in this way, we were able to write the function that does this. We were able to use slices. We are able to use list comprehensions. We can even make it ever so slightly better by getting rid of these square brackets. And then it's no longer a, it's no longer giving, creating a list and returning that list to the sum function. Rather, it's creating a generator, a sort of lazy loading list, if you will. And then it passes that to sum. So it saves a bit of memory if we've got a whole lot of slices, a whole lot of pieces and iterations in our string. Okay, I hope that this was interesting and useful. Rivka, thanks again for sending me this question. If you have questions, don't hesitate to get in touch. You can reach me on Twitter. You can reach me via email. And of course, take a look at my free weekly uh, Better Developers list. Uh, with Python tips and articles every single week. Currently, as of this recording, read by about 19,000 people every week. Thanks a lot, and I'll be back in another video soon with more answers to your Python questions.